Here we are back on the workbench, playing around with some stuff. You can see that the uh, GTV6 is just right beside me. I'm um, actually just doing a little change on it. Nothing's wrong with it. It's just you got to take all this crap off to get the oil filter out. So while I was doing that, um, I figured it'd be a good time, since like my arm doesn't really do much of anything these days, to dick around with something that's going to have to get done eventually, which is adjusting the Milano 3.0 um, Jetronic box for a higher rev cut. Uh, because the Milano's uh, ref cut is much lower than what this car needs to be. And because now I've converted to this ECU, I would like to not have this engine, you know, five or 600 RPM yeah, basically cut short. So what I figured I'd do is put uh, an entire uh, Jetronic system on the bench and basically run it as it would be in the car. Um, so what you need to do that is basically I have the old GTP6 harness here on the table. I have the airflow meter hooked up, obviously, um, so I can dig around with that. Um, I have, you also need the coolant temperature sensor plugged in because that's vital also, also for this to work. You have, I have the combo relay. Um, and other than that, all you really need is just power. So I've got this little, little power transformer half assly connected here. We've got the grounds. Hooked up, we got all the grounds on Jetronic in one spot. We've got the power lead. That's the big thick power lead from the combo relay. Boom. And then you need one more lead that goes basically to where the fuse box would normally be in the car. And then the pink wire basically switches the whole system on. So basically, you uh, you can hear it switch on. I'll just find that wire here. So boom. So right now the system's off. We're gonna turn on the ignition as if it's running. Boom, the injection system goes on. Everything here is live now. So in other words, if you stick something in here, test light, you can see that the Jetronic system is on. So now you need to simulate uh, the pulses from the ignition coil. And for that, you need a function generator. Um, the Jetronic system is used to getting the coil flyback voltage which is really really high like a couple hundred volts so they have this very large resistor to protect um, and to smooth that out so basically all i'm doing is I'm bypassing that resistor so that i can feed it a more reasonable voltage i believe it 10 volts peak to peak uh pulse wave at about 15 percent duty cycle seems to be working just great it's enough to get the ecu to trigger so what we'll do is we're just going to go, we're going to set the uh, frequency to about 30 hertz, which is going to be about like what you'd uh, estimate for about an idle. So we're going to hit that. And you can hear that fuel injector clicking away. So it's kind of cool. When you move the airflow meter, you can hear the duty cycle of the injector change. So that's, that's kind of cool. You can basically see that this airflow meter has a direct impact on the duty cycle of the injector. But anyway, what the goal of this is, is to dick around with the rev limiter. And I know that that little guy right there, yes, you right there, you determine the rev limit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the rev limit first. Okay, so cut off at there. So we're gonna go back to 290. We're gonna go two, three, four. Oh, 290, 294. Oh, there it is. So there's your rev limiter right there at 294.5 hertz. Okay, so we're gonna cut it there we're going to find out what rpm that is divide that by 60 three cylinders oh wait no that's wrong uh we're just going to so it's yeah obviously the frequency multiplied by 60 seconds, divide that by the number of cylinders. 
that fire per revolution, which is three on a V6. So we get 5,890. So this Jetronic ECU for the Milano uh, 3.0 engine cuts off the fuel at 5,890 RPM. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little jump lead right here. And we're going to just bypass that little guy right there. See what happens. All right. Ah, we have bypassed the rev limit. Oh, it does eventually cut off Three, 380 something hertz. So I'm going to guess that's over 7,000 RPM times 60. Divide that by. So yeah, won't really have to worry about that. The valves will be floating by then anyway. So all I really need to do at this point is cut that off because that's annoying. Um, is find a suitable resistor value to put into here to bring the rev limit to what I want. It's about 63 or 6400 RPM is what this two and a half liter engine is supposed to be. So we will get that done and then we will just slap that one back in the car and we'll pull the original one out and we'll probably keep that as a, as a spare. You never know what happens. So yeah, there you go. A little bit of hackery and a little bit of... Uh, R&D at the Nodar Performance. Since uh, since my shoulder's broken, I can't really do a hell of a lot of anything, um, including really drive properly. So yeah, we're just going to have to dick around until I'm a little better. Bye for now.